So first we need to do a mid-course adjustment for the Ike McMuffin. The reason why it's called Muffin and McMuffin is because they wanted us to bring blueberries back from Duna. No mods, yeah. Just like that. You had VIP, ooh, well, fancy. I am not an important person, ever. <laughs> I'm the opposite of an important person. I have, I have to, whenever I go places, I have to sit with everybody else. Alas. What's this moving mark? What? Playing EVE Online for some reason? EVE Online is good. Oh, that's the question mark? That's what it looks like. Oh, Shelby. Your friend. I should upgrade the probe core and so that'll be easier and that'll be good. I don't think our current probe core is up to the task, really. Thanks for following. Person with an unpronounceable name. We've got two, one Kerbal going to Ike, one Kerbal trying to land on Duna, and one station for Ike. We have contracts for these. We need to pick up Ejecta from Ike, blueberries from Duna. And, um... That's, and then we have to bring them back. You don't need 29 kilometers per second to get to Titan. You just want to land there, or do you want to come back? Land and make base, but you don't need to come back. Right? I mean, uh, well, when you say make base, can, can the peop the can the Kerbals just stay there permanently? Or do they have to come back? This, this is my question. You don't need 29 kilometers to land on Titan. You might need a bit to come back. Yeah, uh, you need to aero break. They can stay there. Well, then you only need uh, 17 kilometers per second, I think, because you need nine to nine to well, nine point five to make orbit around Earth. And then you need to transfer, ideally you can transfer to Jupiter first and get a slingshot to Saturn, but if you have to go direct to Saturn, budget 8 kilometers per second for that. That gets you 17, you should be able on a mid-course adjustment to slightly change your orbit to hit Titan. Uh, and as long as you can sort of change your orbit to hit, hit Titan, Titan has this big fluffy atmosphere that extends to 600 kilometers. So, you can use Titan to airbake, you just need to make sure you have a heat shield. And then, uh, Titan will... Uh, you're probably looking at one of those Delta V maps and they're telling you you need like 11 kilometers per second to get to the surface or something like that. But, that's because they're not taking into account you can use Titan to airbrake. We have landed on Titan before, yes. Not Kerbals, though, because I usually use food, water, and oxygen with uh, my uh, realism overhaul, and and in that case, you can't just land Kerbals on Titan very easily. Mechanical weathering on random subdivided ellipsoid. Hmm. Sounds fancy. Tempting. Very tempting. Oh, that's fine. We want to make orbit anyway and get to Ike, not get to Duna. doesn't really matter where we land. Well, it does matter. We have to hit a particular biome on Ike, so. All right, that'll have to do. So that's in 151 days. So let me write the new T. We need to pay attention to this at T plus uh, three, seven, because I can't use Kerbal Alarm Clock either. So this Kerbal is going straight to Ike, and then we've got another Kerbal going to Duna, and we're going to turn to that Kerbal next. Do we know what kinds of chemical weathering happen on Mars? Well, I'm not much of a geologist, so... 
Um, I I can't tell you any details on that. This is beyond my knowledge. I just need rocks. The map area for the game I intend on making is uh, here. It is specifically 21 to 29 degrees north and um, I got the longitudes, but about 8 degrees of longitude as well. Encompassing those canyons there. So that place has gotten some nice alluvial stuff going too. Aro heat shields should not be exploding on you. Um, yeah, that, then something's gone horribly wrong. <laughs> Basically. With a blater. Well, the only time I've had them uh, blow up is when I actually dumped all the ablator and tried that. That did not work. But if there's a blater, maybe you're coming in too hot. What was the situation where it exploded? There are limits. The thing you have to remember is that your temperature increases by like, I think it's the cube or the fourth power of your speed. So, the heat tends to, I mean, even if you're going like just 1000 meters per second more, that can have a huge effect on the temperature. I hope so, Mr. Doobie. I hope there are dunes nearby. But I, uh, you know, it's tough to really zoom in too far to see the details. Um, I'll put dunes anyway. Because <laughs> uh, I think the last thing we landed there was like Viking. So we haven't... We've taken like orbital photos of it in black and white, but we haven't really done a whole lot of roving around in the area partly because they're worried about maybe there's life there so we don't want to disturb it which is annoying her chlorates can fool them to look like water flowing i don't understand are you talking about sentient perchlorates that can i mean well, uh, this, this is definitely there's no mistaking that this is some sort of ancient water flow producing this at this scale. It ain't perchlorates. Oh, we're, we're bad on communication here. Why is that? Are you talking about this? That's the percentage of delta V. Oh. That one? Yeah, first of all, I don't like the warp 2 thing. I'm not gonna touch that. <laughs> I don't I don't care what it does. This are you, are you trying to tell me what it does or does somebody else know what it does? I'm I'm not going to do anything with it. Oh, I'm sure they do, but yeah. T my oh, top T minus 1 minute to the node. Okay. Well, that's not too bad. But we don't want to do that right now, because we may lose communication shortly, so I should do this right now. Well, we'll fix things when we get there. Let's get a node right here. So that we can bring it out. I mean... If we have communication, great. If we can't, it'll burn up in... Tuna's atmosphere. Okay, so that will be in 137 days plus our current time. Uh, but that's not absolute time, that's mission time. Gosh darn it. We'll just use the tracking station for all this stuff. Okay, to the tracking station. 
At least the crude missions don't have to worry about comms. So the first one is gonna be Ike McMuffin. Well, we're gonna have... The play area is gonna be less than the edge of the map. So there's gonna be... Territory where they can't go. I mean... I could have them fall off the edge. <laughs> that could be a very good... Uh, a good old-fashioned flat earth thing. More engines? Only if you need them. Otherwise, they're just spare mass. It's not about more engines, it's the right number of engines. You are a colonist. Yeah. It's an RPG where you play a colonist as part of one faction. There's a list of factions. And... They, you know, you have r relations with various factions and people within the faction and all. Penal colony? Nah, that's not reasonable, I don't think. I, I don't understand Australia, to be honest. <laughs> um, I guess because nobody else wanted to go, but they still wanted to claim it, but... Sort of one transfer cycle doing hard labor on Mars? Yeah, but, you know, convicts are high maintenance. But I mean, you know, half of the problem is the sheer volume it takes for people to be comfortable on their trip, right? Or, or staying there. If you have people who are relatively... Anybody less than, oh, four foot six will do. You know, and, and they'll they'll consume less food, they'll take up less volume, so that we can make smaller living space and they'll still be quite alright with it. I mean, the positive sides of this are endless. I say that as somebody who stands at six foot. I mean, obviously this would not include me, but... We have to be practical here. I mean, you can train somebody to be a pilot or an engineer or a geologist. You cannot train a person to be short. Oh, we're, we're, it's the same thing. I have to encounter it again on the back side. Yeah, I, I don't think we're going to go there, Dialord Root. Even I have my limits. <laughs> You know, um, Mike Collins suggested that everybody going to Mars should have an appendectomy first. That's about the limit on the surgery beforehand. On that one, I'm, I'm well covered. I already had my appendectomy, thank you. Spontaneous reactivation of... You gonna have to explain ERVs? Didn't that happen in Gattaca? Uh, it's been a while. Too tall to be an astronaut, so they. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't approve of such things. Like I don't approve of mo most of what happens in Gattaca. So, not doing that. They should be short to begin with. But I mean, you know, uh, in the space program initially, they had height limits. I'm just saying, maybe you should go a little bit further. Their height limits were conveniently fitting the people that uh, they nevertheless thought ought to go. But I think the practicality is that people should be even shorter. Come back to life. What, these zombie viruses here? And what what do these zombie viruses, viruses do? Okay, we need to land at a specific biome, and here they don't tell me where that is, Dune Ejecta. So let me go back to the contract screen. Plant a flag on Ike. Well, it doesn't say we have to launch a new mission. Well, we're not going equatorial with this, and that's uncrewed. 
All right. Um. So the one that we already had. Tuna ejecta. Polar lowlands, southeast mountain range, or south pole. South pole should be pretty easy. Let's just go for the south pole, right? We'll have uh, our Kerbal do the EVAs around, but I think we're basically going to aim for the south pole. Integrated themselves into our DNA and over time have been made into pseudogenes. How how was that allowed? <laughs> Are these a lot of those junk genes that we repeatedly have? They're pseudoviruses? I mean there's they're vi actual viruses? That's that shouldn't be allowed. What if we're we are a bunch of viruses? Oh, oh, that, that, uh, that ISS. No, uh, so you might not have known, but I was taking the NASA model of the ISS and trying to turn it into something in RO. So I don't know if I'm going to use the one that you linked, Barafel, or whether I'm just going to use the NASA one. The NASA one takes a lot of cleaning up, but it might be worth it. Just so that I own an ISS mod, right? That At that point. And I can use it for other purposes. Oh, given the ionizing radiation in space, it's a risk they'll be reactivated again. What if they're helpful? Maybe they're meant to be activated again, and then we'll discover that we can, like, do something that's helpful to surviving in space. You never know. Sci-fi is happening. <laughs> There's sci-fi happening here. We've got a sci-fi excuse for all sorts of things now, Dalad Rude. You've given us... You've given us sci-fi writers a whole series of possibilities here. Get that down, you know. Uh, ERVs, okay. Uh, endogenous retroviruses, okay. They're the excuse for half of sci-fi that's gonna happen in the next 15 years. If they're helpful, they're helpful. Heck, even if they're not, there's going to be a story about it. Okay, um... So we have to land at the South Polar Regions, but we want to do EVA report. No, we already done Midlands. But I definitely did not do Polar Regions, so... This is not the best view. Wishful thinking? It's fictional thinking. See, th this is where I get to give scientists a headache. You know, like the alternate history people, they give me a headache because I'm an historian. As a sci-fi writer, I get to give scientists headaches. <laughs> oh, that uh, it's too feasible. Gosh darn it. <laughs> I'm not giving Dollar Rouge enough of a headache. No, that's good. I've, I've got. Can I get that in writing? <laughs> we wrote this plot in careful consultation during a Twitch stream. <laughs> oh no, no. But I, 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 I try to be good. I try to be a good sci-fi writer. Like, in my stories, it isn't a warp drive, it's actually hyperspace, which is why I need the multiple realities and all that business, but is this a different biome? And in Time Warp a whole lot. Ah, it's Midlands. Oh, there's a South Pole. Let's stop. No, uh, other way. How much does it cost now? Several thousand? Oh, 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 wow. I didn't think it was several thousand. Vern Verners and RCS? 
Man in high cat. Well, man, uh, Philip K. Dick is different. <laughs> Philip K. Dick is different. Okay, that's that's not a yeah. I can't watch that either. But yeah, no. I mean, uh, speaking for myself, I'm not good at biology. Uh, it's physics first, then chemistry, then biology for me. So yeah, certainly least confidence in that. One thousand? I didn't realize. That's crazy. That's like some mistake. Nah, uh, I don't know about that. Wordsworth was smoking something too. But, uh, yeah. The childlike imagination is good. It's the immortality part that I've got a problem with. It's okay to say, you know, having a childlike imagination is good. That's good enough. You don't have to bloody promise immortality for it. That's going too far. If you can't see the intrinsic benefit of having a good imagination and you need, like, immortality as an excuse to have a good imagination, maybe you shouldn't have a good imagination after all. Intimations? Suggestions? Hints? Hints. Intimations are like hints. That's a better way of going about it. I just got a fair amount of gravity. After dealing with Gilly, this might be a little bit confusing to me. Let me just get rid of this stage. It's not about landing. It's about landing while talking to chat, Farafel. It's like half the time looking at the craft and the other half looking at my other screen. Too, well, you know, I, I have trouble with that, too, but, I mean, yes, I mean, obviously I know that, and I've often argued that life is much more likely to be something completely unexpected, and people are not nearly imaginative enough when they think about that. The problem is, neither is the reader, and so, if you create a very imaginative alien species, right, you know, something that's actually more like what it probably would be. The reader has more difficulty, you know, finding that accessible. And the motivations for such a creature might be very different than ours. Yeah, well, we know humorously that uh, Star Trek does get that wrong. Oh, we're properly on the ground. Very good. Let's just store that, uh, get that crew report. Alright. Yeah, like the Klingons. Well, the early Klingons were basically just humans in a different uniform and bad hair. But. <laughs> okay, take surface sample. Eat. Plant flag. Tezer on Ike, uh, at Ike South Pole. What's an ejecta? Well, that's what we're here to find out. So we need to find an ejecta. Now, it seems to me like we probably should wait until daylight. If that happens quickly enough on Ike. Should have sent a poet. Well, that's uh, the theory they're going with on uh, that uh, Dear Moon project with SpaceX and all, but... You know, Mike Collins is okay as far as... You know, sometimes... The idea that you need somebody... You just need somebody who's a little bit more... Borderline, I guess you could say. They had to work with a very limited... Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Uh, there's practical. There's a lot of practicality stuff in the, at that point. Um, yeah, and even a series like Farscape, which did have some other sort of creatures that are a little bit more novel. Still, there are a lot of them that walk on two legs. And that's more because of the psychology of the viewer. Uh, it's tidally locked and it might be like a few years before we get... PC games don't have that excuse, that's very true. Oh, we, we might get some light here. Yeah, I wouldn't expect DNA to be a thing. Mm -hmm. Could be something completely- heck, I've argued for, you know, non-carbon based life forms even. Just because carbon is the most likely thing, it depends on what the local chemistry is. What's most convenient. Yeah, but the problem is the idea that there are this block of analytical people and this block of creative people and there's nobody in between. I'm a person in between. I can work equations and write books. I can make images and do little artworks and do graphic design and write code. So, I mean, the, the dedicated... I don't even think that a dedicated poet would appreciate what they're looking at, necessarily. Because, to some extent, it's helpful to know what makes what you're looking at special. A poet might look at the landscape of the moon and be quite depressed. But a geologist might not be. <laughs> so, somebody who happens to know geology and... and be able to communicate it would be best. Well, you know. You've got a novel in you somehow. <laughs> the co code can be art. Yes, it can be. Anybody see any ejecta around? I don't see anything standing out at all. Except for my shadow. Well, I saw a glint over there somewhere. Yeah, exactly. Well, uh, yeah, to, uh, Feynman definitely articulated it well. And Feynman was very good at articulating things. Like, if you had sent him to the moon, I think he would have given you quite a few artistic observations about them that would have been very good. I don't know if he would have gone, but... He had a way of explaining things to people. Ejecta... <laughs> oh yes, yes, Ejecta from... from... That, uh, Vesuvius. Vesuvius Ejecta, right? Great recipe. Barbecue. Some forms of art do go very well with analytical thinking, that's true too. I mean, music in particular. Well, I'm keeping an eye on my fuel and I don't have a whole lot of extra now. Well, I'm gonna turn back and get some more EVA propellant. But we have a lot of Delta V in the pod, so if we have to relocate, we can relocate. We can hover around in the pod, too. Unrepentant? No, they definitely did not say that. We have accounts from, uh... From people who are nearby. And actually went in to help, too. Played the ukulele. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of the ukulele, I find it... I don't like the sound of it, but... Yeah. Music is one of those things. Another thing that's fairly good is cooking. 
as a form of uh, Pliny the Elder. Yeah, yeah, Pliny the Elder. There you go. Yep. Um, cooking is pretty good. I mean, it's practically chemistry, really. As a form of artistic expression. I'm sure mathematicians... Uh, mathematicians who are interested in topology should get into sewing, to be honest. It's just absolutely up their alley. Uh, I didn't see... Did you guys see anything? Anything that looked like Duna Ejecta? Because I didn't see anything. Hmm. It did say South Pole, right? I don't think, like, taking an oblique view is going to help. I didn't see squat. Baking is cooking with more downtime. Baking you have to measure more precisely, though. If you're just frying stuff up, I mean, the, the measurement skills aren't that careful. Hmm, okay, what looks like a southeastern mountain range? Well, Kerbalnet, I don't know. Kerbnet. Um, I don't even know what looks like a southeastern mountain range on this thing. If this is the South Pole. I mean, it doesn't look like it has any mountain ranges at all. There's that spot, but that's obviously not in the south. I guess... We'll just go some way and land. We've got 3,600 meters per second. We need to reserve like 1,200 to get home. So, um, let's go towards the sun so at least we'll get some sunlight to find things. I mean, this is sort of a ridge. I don't know if it counts as a mountain range. That That's sort of mountainish, right? No, no, other way. There is a black patch there, not to mention it, but I think we're looking for a rock, right? I don't know. Maybe we're not looking for a rock. Maybe I'm mistaking what we're actually looking for. Maybe it's like all over the place and I just didn't appreciate that. Oh, I don't see any telltale rocks around. Yeah, that that's that's I think what uh, I, I took that little route to mean. There's a rock over there. The weird thing is we don't even have terrain scatter around. Oh, where did I see it? Uh, the, the, there. There's a thing there. First, let's check biome EV report. South Pole still, so I don't need to do anything more. Are you Duna Ejecta? It's red. That's a good sign. Got to be, right? Pick up Duna Ejecta. Keep. <laughs> Success! Uh, don't crash into it. Uh, okay. Position properly. Position. Chip, 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 chip. Ah, rookies. Okay, what's with that bounce? Come on. We might get her to do some other biomes, but not right now. Right now, we will focus on blueberries. 